Hey, uh, Anav here uh, from Coding Blocks, and I'm really excited to bring to you this uh, new series here, which is on uh, TypeScript. Uh, I have been thinking of making this for quite a while, actually. And uh, while I was thinking to make it uh, just three, four days back, uh, TypeScript updated their website, which uh, has quite a, a bit of new documentation and new features, which is quite great, uh, you know, just before starting my series, so I can make use of that. Um, so, uh, the reason I'm pretty excited about this is because uh, TypeScript is something that has been growing in a lot of popularity in the, uh, you know, recent past. Uh, especially like if you uh, are a, uh, you know, if you are a JavaScript developer, if you have been using JavaScript a little bit for front-end or back-end in Node.js, uh, then uh, I believe you already heard of TypeScript, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, front-end uh, frameworks like Angular, Vue.js, they are written in TypeScript and they encourage you to write your code in TypeScript and similarly, a lot of backend frameworks, uh, uh, you know, like Koa and NestJS, they are also written in TypeScript or they encourage people to write the code in TypeScript. And uh, the reason is that, you know, uh, as you move into big enterprise level projects where, you know, 10, 15 people are working together and there are uh, maybe, you know, 100, 200 files in your project. Uh, the biggest challenge that we uh, start running into is the lack of a proper uh, data type system in JavaScript and uh, the lack of a consistent object oriented way of developing that exists in programs uh, like, uh, you know, programming languages like Java or C sharp or uh, even, uh, you know, Rust or Golang. These, these languages, um, you know, they have like proper uh, data types and uh, classes and interfaces, um, you know, and you can bring all your uh, uh, or your object-oriented uh, design patterns like factory, builder, dependency injection, all of that stuff. And uh, that's kind of important for building large-scale uh, complex uh, applications. So uh, so TypeScript, uh, as you can see on this website, as it says, is it's a, it's a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles to play in JavaScript. So what TypeScript has done is that they have uh, added a compilation stage to JavaScript in a way. So, so you take TypeScript source code and uh, first it compiles. And after compilation, it turns into JavaScript. It does not turn into something like binary code or bytecode, it turns into JavaScript. So basically anything that you write in TypeScript turns into JavaScript. So uh, basically essentially when you're writing TypeScript apps, you're writing JavaScript apps so you can use JavaScript, existing JavaScript libraries. You can run them on Node.js, you can run them on your browser. Uh, you can uh, you know run TypeScript programs uh, essentially everywhere you could be running JavaScript programs, but now there's an additional compilation stage during which type checking happens. So JavaScript being, you know, a weakly typed and a dynamically typed language, TypeScript makes it, you know, strongly typed and statically typed. So uh, there are better data types, uh, you know, classes and interfaces are there and uh, you have, you know, proper uh, type checking at the compilation level so that errors don't come up at the runtime, errors can come up at the compilation level itself. So it does not mean that, you know, having classes and having interfaces and having proper uh, type checking uh, solves all the problems in uh, your development workflow. Like if you're writing the wrong logic somewhere or, you know, you know, you just architecture of your problem is uh, wrong, then that's a different case. But a lot of the problems that happen with large projects is basic data type checking uh, at the compilation stage can help us prevent a lot of errors and TypeScript uh, has uh, been very popular these days. Uh, especially with people who are writing bigger applications is uh, for this reason. And if you look at the website for TypeScript, it says that it starts and ends with JavaScript. Uh, that's, you know, uh, TypeScript is completely a superset of JavaScript, which means that any existing JavaScript code is valid TypeScript. Uh, there are some additional extra syntax that you can make use of, but, uh, you know, if you write plain JavaScript, that's also valid uh, TypeScript. It's kind of the relationship between C language and uh, with C++ or Objective-C. So if you have valid C code, that kind of compiles with C++ or Objective-C as well, uh, apart from a few exceptions, but mostly yes. So it's it's it's, it's kind of like that, uh, you know, uh, TypeScript uh, builds upon JavaScript and uh, it runs with existing JavaScript code bases, it runs with existing JavaScript libraries. Uh, and these days, like a lot of front-end frameworks like Angular, Vue, uh, they're using it, back-end uh, people are using it as well. and. Uh, by the way, uh, one thing before we actually get started with our hands-on code, uh, so, uh, you know, um, there's like the information here on this website, how to install TypeScript. Uh, so you can install the TypeScript compiler like this, and then you can compile a TypeScript file like this. We will actually get to that a little later. What we'll do is we will first use the playground. The playground is, uh, I think, the best place to get started with TypeScript. You can go to the playground and quickly write some TypeScript code and see 
uh, how it works. So we will start off with the entire playground uh, from the next video. But before that, in this video, I just want to clarify that, you know, this series is uh, targeted towards people who have uh, used uh, JavaScript already before and know the basics of it. So like, you know, how variables are created, how functions are created, how objects are created. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of idea about, you know, uh, closures and prototypes and how they work in JavaScript. Uh, so, so basically, uh, as uh, the TypeScript language website says, the TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So it's JavaScript plus some additional things. So uh, this series largely focuses on these additional things that exist in TypeScript. Uh, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time uh, explaining the basic JavaScript stuff. Uh, so if, if you don't have an any idea of JavaScript yet. Uh, so before the series, I would say you should get an idea of JavaScript. And for that, you know, you can pick up uh, the, the coding blocks, uh, full stack web development course on Node.js. There's a backend Node.js course, so there's a front end course with JavaScript as well. So you can do any of these courses and they cover JavaScript really well. You can pick up, you know, uh, JavaScript knowledge from javascript.info or you can do the JavaScript course on free code camp, which is free. Uh, I mean, whatever place, I, uh, it's not necessarily that you need to do it from coding blocks itself, but uh, you need to have basic information about JavaScript before you begin the series, because this series is going to be assuming that uh, the person who is watching it uh, does know basic JavaScript already, uh, and it will be focusing on the on the part that JavaScript adds to it. Okay, so uh, so I think without you know wasting a lot of time let's get started uh, you know let's see what other stuff we can do with uh, typescript so if we go to typescript lang.org that's the website and then you can go and click on the playground and then um, we can start writing typescript code and see how it works okay uh, 